So my name is Brian Hansen, and uh, I directed a short film called Wild Side, which is about uh, my skating journey, starting out as a competitive long track speed skater and uh, kind of coming across a side of the sport where people mostly just skate outside on lakes and rivers and natural bodies of water. Is this your first film? Yeah. This is uh, yeah my first film that I've done that, that I've submitted to film festivals. And what pursued you to take up the, I, the idea or concept of filmmaking this, so documenting what you're doing? Was it a, a normal progression of it or did someone suggest this to you? I, one of my friends, Colin, who actually has another film in the, in the Milwaukee Short Film Festival, he's been following me and we've been working on a project filming back when I was skating competitively before the Olympics. Um, and actually, he was looking to go to the 2014 Olympics, so we were doing some filming with that. Um, and then kind of through the past, you know, five years, uh, we didn't really film too much. But um, then I started doing this outdoor skating. So I reached back out to him and said, you know, this is really cool. And we got some cool shots and things sort of progressed from there. And then it did, it did actually become an idea, I'd say, <clears throat> at a certain point when I realized how beautiful it was to shoot and kind of I felt like I wanted to expose the outdoor side of the sport to people more so that they could kind of like or to to sort of you know just put out there what what else is out there in the sport of speed skating. It is a stunning looking movie it's just gorgeous photography. Um, I imagine a lot of it was with was filmed with a drone. Yeah and actually I mean I can't take credit for a lot of those, the, there were several just incredible videographers and photographers that I worked with. Um, that's how I got a lot of this like incredible footage. Um, so one being another wild ice skater, Dave Kozlowski out of Colorado and another being Will Strathman. And then the third being Colin, um, Colin Seitz from out of here in Milwaukee. So your background is you trained to be an Olympian. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not too familiar with the um, lifespan of Olympian athletes. Do you say you're mm -hmm. in retirement now? Is there a certain time where it's peak performance for you and then you have to, you know, move on? Yeah, I'd say a lot of skaters, um, I mean, really, the young, they peak anywhere from as early as 21. Some people are starting to win gold medals. Uh, all the way up till maybe around 31. Any younger, it's like kind of definitely an outlier and any older, it's a little bit of an outlier as well. But um, yeah, mid to late twenties. So I'm actually still in like kind of a decent age for it, but um, it kind of became difficult for me to uh, continue speed skating knowing that, uh, I don't know, I wanted to kind of pers pursue some other options um, uh, like, professionally like like my career and working on that and there were some other things that I wanted to do and you know this is actually kind of part of sort of one of the things that I wanted to get to when I was done with skating is is just seeing what else uh you know what else I could do with the sport basically you've been all over the place you've been in Vancouver you've been in Russia you've been in South Korea you mm -hmm. you you go over to place and shot this film in Colorado and, you know, a little bit here in Milwaukee. I mean, you're, yeah. you travel around quite a bit. Um, what would you, what's your favorite area to skate in? Oh boy, that's tough. Um, I mean, what, any area that's having an Olympics is always an incredible time and place to skate, but um, the speed skating Mecca I'd say of the world is actually the Netherlands. And um, I mean, it's kind of interesting, like the part of the reason for that is because people grew up skating on canals and they grew up skating outside and canals and, and they don't freeze as well as they used to, um, you know, back in the 80s and 90s. And so but that's like what drove that sport in the Netherlands. And um, and so I think the popularity of the sport actually in the U.S. is maybe in some ways similar where people used to skate outside all the time in Chicago and Milwaukee. And um, they really don't do that anymore. And I think the popularity of the sport has died off 
partly because of that, or maybe even largely because of that, because it's not accessible anymore. I think it's lost some of the beauty and maybe like a little bit the, the ruggedness of it, if that makes sense. So yeah, yeah, I, yeah. In the old days, people used to go out and skate as a recreational thing. Now they kind of only do it during the holidays in a in a rink to you know as a family gathering. Yeah. Yeah, it's totally changed. What's your, I mean, now that you've, you've, you've done um, many types of skating and now it looks like you're going into the um, nature more, mm -hmm. it, how different is it to skate in, in a nature setting than it is in like a rink or whatever? Um, you know, it depends on the spot. There's been some days like, you know, when we were in Colorado, the ice was just incredible. There's, there weren't too many cracks. There were some cracks, <laughs> but there were moments where, where there was like almost no cracks. The skating felt very similar, um, to what it felt like inside. I'd say sometimes you end up with ice that's really bumpy. Um, you know, that's definitely different watching out for cracks. Sometimes, I mean, we have, I have been out there when it's, definitely on the thin side but um just watching out for you know being aware of you know where it's thin and you know that sort of thing um but uh you know for the most part it's been like i mean more just as, i mean the skating's been great I, it's been better actually than i expected for growing up my whole life skating inside so much and i mean i skated outside I think I can think of literally like a handful of times once on a lake and then it wasn't until I was done that I just said all right that's it <laughs> I'm trying this you know so now when you go with your film you're going in you know outside and walking to different areas are the other skiers with you from those areas or do they travel with you too yeah I mean I really it was mostly my one friend Chase who Actually, no, you're right. There, there were several. Um, I got in touch with them usually the day before and said, look, I, it's looking like it's going to be good. Um, do you have time to meet up? Because um, it really, I, like, even though the actual skating only might take an hour and a half or two hours, it takes some time to go scope it out, to drive there, to, you know, get ready and <laughs> all that. So, I mean, it takes, like, some time. And then when the sun sets at 5 p.m. in the middle of winter, it's like you kind of got to move on it early even if it's like to do it on a Friday, you got to almost like take half a day off work to just get out there and get going. But I mean, it's totally worth it. I love, you know, I love it. So um, yeah, usually I'd contact some friends from the Pettit where I skate in Milwaukee, or I'd contact, um, you know, some other old skaters who aren't even skating anymore. And I'd say, Hey, want to go um, try this spot? And I'd bring along with me like, sometimes a wetsuit for them to borrow or um there's actually that that green surfboard back there that's yeah. the surfboard i use as the floaty device um and sometimes to test spots like because if if the ice cracks we're going to be totally fine on the surfboard and with a wetsuit so like we go with a lot of stuff we're kind of we're pretty ready to go in just in case so did you enjoy uh your first outing as a filmmaker are you thinking of making some more films yeah oh yeah absolutely and i mean like i i really got into you know editing and kind of like trying to frame how i tell the story um and you know it was a struggle like i the first draft i put i put together probably like 15 drafts before it was like the final one that i submitted and um and i submitted to a bunch of people i said you know does this make sense and kept making iterations and uh yeah, I found it, I found it exciting and also very rewarding um, because, you know, it really gave me a chance to like sit down and think, okay, how, what do I want to say? What, how do I want to tell this? And I think there's a lot of messages, but I think, you know, some of the most important messages and I got across through this film. So yeah, I enjoyed it. This is a, a, a unique thing in, in the terms that when um, festival programmers close to the end of the submission period, they kind of know what films are going in, but you leave room in case something good comes along and you, and they all oh, put that in. I mean, this year, it, your film was one of the last films submitted and I saw that and it was like, oh, that definitely has to be put in. And um, 
you know, we've we've taken a lot more films from the from the final deadline period than we normally do. It's 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 a really good film. Oh, I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, and like I said, I, I mean, I was kind of the one that just helped put it all these pieces together, you know, um, without the like all these videographers that helped and without Colin's help and getting the you know the, the editing finalized and figured out like it wouldn't have happened so thank you I, I appreciate it and I'm I'm glad that we were able to get it in um I was worried about missing the deadline but we got it so well thank you for seeking us out and sending us your film yeah absolutely <laughs>